It's the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and uh, for our, all of our listeners across the Flow Network today, I'm chatting with a gentleman on location right now. Uh, Dan Crouch from Flow News 24 is out and about. I believe he might even be on a beach in Kangaroo Island. Uh, Dan, how are you, mate? Um, good, thanks, Jace. That's pretty much spot on, mate. I'm lucky enough to have uh, some wild kangaroos and wallabies and koalas pretty close by. So, yeah, pretty good scenes here, but good to have a chat nevertheless. Love it. Uh, love the nothing more Australian than sitting on a beach surrounded by uh, kangaroos and wallabies talking about the NBA. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're about to have a look at. We're coming up to the All Star weekend, and we will get to that in a moment. But uh, as we get to the All Star break, a few games in action today. Then they'll have a couple of days off before the All Star game on Monday. And, of course, uh, there's a few things that we'll talk about, the, the uh, slam dunk competition in the lead up to that. But uh, let's have a look at the standings as they are right now. We might just go through the top four in each conference. So uh, the 76 is on top in the Eastern Conference uh, at the moment. They're tied with the Nets as things stand right now. But I believe the 76 will be in action soon. Uh, the Bucks have slid back over the last couple of weeks and the Celtics are on the rise once more. They're into the top four with the Knicks knocking it at their heels. It's been a long time since we've seen them this far up. So uh, the Eastern Conference is shaping up to be a pretty interesting race. Yeah, it certainly is. It's um, maybe not the top four that everyone expected or the top five, certainly with the Knicks in there. But um, yes, Philly are on top. They're playing really well. Embiid's playing MVP-level basketball. And um, James Harden, same deal, just been rolling for the Brooklyn Nets with Kevin Durant out. And he silenced all the critics who thought uh, the Nets might be a bit of a disaster after they traded for him. And, yeah, they're, they're rolling along uh, pretty nicely. So, yeah, the East is looking good. And uh, I think it's going to be between those two teams at the end of the day. But Milwaukee certainly... Um, can't be left out of the conversation with Giannis. He, he's not going to win MVP this year like he has the last two years, but I think that's largely from voter fatigue more than anything. He's probably playing just as well as he has in those last two seasons. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the Lakers have slid back a little bit in the West, but uh, look, it's all about the Jazz at the moment. So the Utah Jazz are the best team in basketball right now. Uh, 27 wins, 9 losses heading into the All-Star break. Gee whiz, if you are a Jazz fan, you're up and about right now. Yeah, that's right. They've just been tremendous. And I've, I've talked them up on this show um, pretty much every time we talk NBA because they've just been uh, pretty much unstoppable. They've been belting opponents left, right and centre. And yeah, they deserve that top spot right now. But um, the Phoenix Suns can't be left out of the conversation there. I think they uh, they were up to second uh, yesterday or the day before. They might have slid with other teams playing, but they look absolutely amazing after... Oh, 10 years or something since they've made the playoffs last. It's been a rough, rough while for Suns fans. So it's good to see them up and about. But Lakers and Clippers knocking on the door of those two, to me, they're still the two best teams in the conference. So uh, come playoff time, it's going to be very, very intriguing how those four teams play out. It will be. And I'll tell you who else is looming large. We've got the uh, the Trailblazers in fifth spot. But in sixth spot, the uh, the Spurs are just hanging around. They played a few less games than most of the other teams at the moment. They've got a few more to play. They're loitering and ready to strike. The Clippers are in third on the, the Western Conference ladder at the moment. And uh, when the Lakers get some of their stars back, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a mouth-watering uh, playoff series for the West. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, you want to be playing the eighth seed in the West at the moment. There, uh, There's some pretty good ball, ball sides in amongst all of this. It's, uh, there's plenty of good teams there in the West. There's, it's seriously stacked as it is most years. And, yeah, you mentioned the Spurs. They're, they're probably the most unheralded team in there. The casual basketball fan might not know too many of their players, to be honest. But, yeah, Greg Popovich has them in really good form, as you'd expect from um, arguably the best coach of all time. So, mm. yeah, they're ticking along nicely, the Spurs. Let's talk about the All-Star break and uh, what is to come. Now, I know you're excited about uh, the uh, the dunking contest. Uh, and everyone gets excited about this, let's be fair. It's probably the premier event of the All-Star Weekend, and there are three very likely types that will go head-to-head for the title. Yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a surprise this year. Obviously, it's been a long-time thing with the dunk contest that they struggle to attract uh, superstar talents. But nevertheless, Obi Toppin, Cassia Stanley, and Anthony Simmons, they're all really good dunkers, and... Let's hope they can put on a really good show for the fans. But, um, 
yeah, not not the LeBron James, Zion Williamson, Zach Levine type contest that fans hope for pretty much every single year. But yeah, I think it's going to be a good good contest anyway. It will be, and the three point contest is growing in popularity um, over the years. It certainly has anyway, and uh, there's a good field going at it in there as well. Headlined by uh, uh, Stephen. Uh, by Curry, of course, from the Warriors, but he's not alone. Uh, in some, uh, there's some talented shooters going up against each other here, including two from the Celtics. Yeah, it's really good to see the, the double Celtics get the nod in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, the, the two Jays for the Celtics. So, see who can come out on top there. But obviously, Steph Curry back in the field, he's going to be the one to beat. He's uh, best shooter of all time, without a doubt. So, yeah, he'll be the one to beat there. And Zach Levine and Devin Booker. Uh, are going to be really good challenges as well, and and Donovan Mitchell, the other one there, probably the probably the least heralded uh, three point shooter of the group there, but certainly capable of causing an upset. So um, also across the All Star weekend, other than the big game itself, the All Star game, um, what do they actually play for in the All Star game, Dan? Is it just for uh, for glory uh, in in Major League Baseball? Of course, they used to play for the home ground advantage in the World Series. What are they playing for in uh, the All-Star game in the basketball? Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong here, because obviously with the uh, COVID circumstances and the shortened season, this year is weird and different. But the past few years, they've been playing for, um, as basically playing for money. Each player yep. wins an amount of money and, and it goes to a charity of their choice. So, yep. um, yeah, obviously all the money made does go to charity, uh, which is great. But... Um, yeah, last year we saw one of the all-time great All-Star games, maybe the best ever when they played to the, the target score, uh, which was 24 points more than uh, whatever the leading team had at three-quarter time uh, in honour of Kobe Bryant, who obviously wore number 24 and had recently passed away uh, not long before that game. So they, they nailed it last year, and this year it just won't quite be the same. But I believe they're sticking with that same format of a target score in the fourth quarter. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, with with COVID and a lot of the players just aren't as uh, up and about for All Star Weekend as they usually are. So let's hope they still put on a show and it's not all just uh, zero defense and all slam dunks. But hey, if if it is, at least we'll get to see the Zion Williamson dunks that we are seeing in the dunk contest. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, of course, um, through the All Star Game, um, obviously clubs hold their collective breath. Nobody wants injuries in an All Star Game, but. Um, as you say, it's traditionally a game of offense and not to too hard defense, but uh, it'll go um, on TV screens, I think, mid-morning on Monday Australian time, and uh, lots of people will be tuning in. I imagine you'll be one of them. Well, I'll be, I'll be oh, I say stuck in KI, I'm not stuck, obviously, because I'm loving it here, but I'll be, yes, yeah, definitely trying to get to a TV to see as much as I can, but if not, I'll be watching the highlights pretty intently. And, of course, this year... Um, Normally it's done over a whole weekend with the event spaced out, but obviously this year every event's just done on the one day, so it's going to be a huge day of basketball. Uh, and yeah, hope, hopefully the players put on a really good show for the fans. Indeed. Uh, just before we wrap up, really quickly, NBL action. I will do a quick wrap around as to what's been going on in the NBL. The Wildcats had a thrilling win against the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix recently. And uh, the Taipans uh, got over the top of the Kings. Very interesting game there. Now, on Saturday, the 36ers will take on the Taipans. And the 36ers, true to form, when they lose, they get absolutely belted, don't they? Uh, uh, there's no in-between for them. No, you're spot on. And I can't remember off the top of my head what the exact score was at quarter of, time of one of their recent games, but it was something like 6-32 to 32 or yep. something unbelievably one-sided. So... Yeah, after a few early wins, their form's a bit shaky, but they're still in the hunt for a a final spot. So, yeah, hopefully they can pull off the win on Saturday. Not going to want to be uh, relying on percentage. They've got the worst point differential in the competition (laughs) at the moment, fifth on the ladder. But uh, this game against the Breakers on Saturday, it was hard to watch. Uh, The Breakers, 106. The 36 is 62. I haven't seen a bath like that on a basketball court in a very long time, mate. No, I must admit, I did see one in the NBA the other day when the Memphis Grizzlies beat my beloved Houston Rockets by a casual 49 points, which was pretty bloody terrible from the Rockets. But obviously, the NBA's got longer quarters and more three-point shooters, so it's a bit easier to run up a score like that. But yeah, for the NBA, that's absolutely woeful from the Sixers, and, and yeah, that's just an absolute thrashing, so... Hopefully they can turn it around. 
Yep, a uh, quick ra- update on the ladder. Melbourne United way on top. They've only had the one loss, ironically, to the 36s. Nine, for, nine and one from 10 games. And then we've got four teams tied on six wins. They've all played a differing number of games. It goes Wildcats, Hawks, South East Melbourne, Phoenix, the 36s. A game back are the Bullets and the Kings, sixth and seventh on the ladder with five wins each. And then the Breakers and the Taipans. Ironically, the Taipans, bottom of the ladder with four wins. Um, and uh, the Breakers on three wins are above them on uh, percentage uh, and <laughs> matches played. So it's a strange year in the NBL. Dan, we'll let you get back to the Wallabies and the Kangaroos on Kangaroo Island. Thanks for joining us on the Flow Friday Night Sports Show. Don't mind if I do. Thanks, Jake. See, see you later.